I'm Insomniac, and this is the Islander ISL-131. Do you own an Islander watch? Let me know which model you have, and let me know what you think about it down in the comments. And that's it. Let's jump right into this one. The case starts on a high note for me. More specifically, the size of the case. It's slim, it's more than reasonable in lug-to-lug -lug length, and it's only 38 millimeters, which means it'll fit any smaller standard sized wrist in a way that's classic and comfortable. There's a subtle yet significant detail to be found here in the machining with this cool curve here that separates the sides of the case from the tops of the lugs, almost giving the lug tops an embossed look as if they're popping up out of the case. Pretty cool. The quality of the finishing on this watch is really good. The polishing is smooth and uniform, and the tops of the lugs have this nice linear brushed pattern which is uniform all the way through. And the smooth polished bezel has a simple but elegant look to it. The exhibition case back might be the only thing that I don't love here, not because of the case back itself, but because of the Miyota movement it shows off. It's pretty plain. A little bit of rotor decoration or something would have maybe helped here. Personally, I would have rather seen a solid case back. The crown, on the other hand, is great. It's a screw down crown, the brand's logo is engraved into the face, and it's nice and large with a great grip around the edge, which makes winding and setting the watch really effortless. Overall, it's a simple and understated, but nicely finished case. All right, before we get to the macro shots of the dial and the details, I have to explain something. The dial on this watch is the reason why I selected this watch for review. I'm a big fan of the old Rolex linen dial Datejust, and I have to be honest with you, when I opened the box for this watch, I was disappointed. Because being a fan of the linen dial Rolex Datejust, I took one look at this and just felt like they missed the mark. Until I took this picture here, which is on the Should I Time This Instagram. It was while observing this dial on the wrist with this sweater on that I took another look at it and I was like, they didn't miss the mark at all. It does in fact look like a linen dial, it just doesn't look like a Rolex Datejust linen dial. The ISL-131 has more of a almost kind of like cheese cloth, you're gonna see it up close in a minute. Kind of like cheesecloth or like dish towel type linen pattern to it. But it has a cloth-like aesthetic to it, right? So, linen dial. And honestly, it's unfair to compare this to the linen dial date just for a list of reasons, even if that was probably most likely the inspiration for this watch. Ever since I took that picture, I honestly did see this dial in a different light, which totally changed my mind about it. The dial is simple, clean, and reminiscent of a date just dial in many ways but without looking like a clone or a homage piece necessarily. Even outside of the different style of linen pattern, there are differences here, which is nice to see. I'd always rather see a brand give a piece some identity other than just that brand's logo. I like the look of the chapter ring here. It has just the right angle to it, and it has kind of an aluminum aesthetic to it that I find attractive. I love the symmetry here with the markers and date window. You have these nice, thick, broad rectangular markers around the whole dial with a double marker up at 12, and you have a date window, but it's down at six o'clock so it doesn't break up the balance of the markers from side to side. You have a polished border around the date window, which matches the borders around the hour markers well. And under the 12 o'clock position, you have the Islander logo, which as I mentioned in my last Islander review, I'm not a big fan of the logo being the same as the logo for the retail site. If you want to know why, see my review on the ISL 79, but it's small and simple and definitely not too distracting on this dial. Polishing on the hands is well done. The style of the handset fits the dial perfectly, and the length of the hands is perfect for the diameter of the watch, so well done on the handset. Of course, the main event of this dial is the dial surface itself, which has this textured pattern applied to it, which is what gives it that linen look. The linen pattern here has good depth to it, and different light angles tend to catch certain ridges and grooves differently, which adds a bit of variety to the visuals when looking at the watch throughout the day. So like I said earlier, not a linen dial date just, but as a standalone piece, it's a successful linen dial. The only usable complication on this watch is the date at six o'clock. It's large enough to be legible, the black numeral on a white disc choice matches the dial perfectly, and it's always a useful complication, so no complaints. The ISL-131 uses C3 Super Luminova for the fillings in the hands and hour markers, and I have to say, it's good loom. It's not the brightest loom I've ever seen, but on top of picking up a charge from most light sources fairly easily and lasting pretty long, this is more of a dress style watch overall. Oftentimes, dress style watches don't even have loom, or when they do, it tends to be much more reserved than this. The loom situation here is definitely above average and very usable. Time at a glance on this piece is excellent. It's a simple, uncluttered dial, the hands are perfect lengths for the dial, and all of the markers are easy to find and contrast well against the light backdrop of the dial and chapter ring, which makes reading the time at a quick glance very simple.
The bracelet they used for the ISL-131 is a Jubilee-style bracelet, which looks perfect with this watch overall. And not unlike with the case, the finishing is great. You have a double-locking clasp, which has a solid, sturdy feel, and you have fine adjusters at the clasp for getting the bracelet size just right after removing links. Now, I did find this bracelet to feel a little bit lighter and overall cheaper than some other Jubilee-style bracelets I've had here, like in comparison to the Jevril Wall Street, but this bracelet balanced the watch body well, and was comfortable throughout the day. So overall, it's a solid choice for this piece, both aesthetically and functionally. Last but not least, we have value. And not unlike the last Islander watch I reviewed on this channel, whether or not this watch is a really good value for you kind of comes down to a fairly straightforward if slash then scenario. As of the time of this video, these watches are selling on the Long Island watch site for $349. On the one hand, you have a pretty basic Rolex Datejust style watch with a retail website's logo on the dial and a Miyota movement, but on the other hand, there are two things this watch has that are fairly uncommon. The first of which being the smaller of the two is actually the Miyota movement that I just mentioned. The 9015 that they use in this watch actually isn't one of Miyota's cheaper movements. It's a high beat movement that if you price it out by itself actually runs about $100 or more. But the bigger thing here is the dial. If you love the linen dial aesthetic, all you have to do right now is go to Google and type in linen dial watch. And what a quick search is gonna show you is that outside of a bunch of used Rolex and Omega stuff, you're gonna get almost nothing. Search for linen dial watches in this price range and you find even less. This patterned dial is something that's very unique. It doesn't look like every other watch out there. When you pair that to the overall build quality of this watch and the movement that they fitted to it, if you like the linen dial aesthetic, it's pretty clear that this watch is actually a great value. To see my review on the Islander ISL 79, click here.